It looks like a simple house in a rural suburb outside of Belgrade, the capital of Serbia. Nothing looks out of order from the outside. But in 2021, when police searched it, they found a secret door in the garage leading to a hidden room. And in this room, they found an industrial meat grinder. But this meat grinder wasn't used for animals. It was used by a criminal group to grind up human beings. They tortured their victims, often decapitated them, extracted the organs, cut them into small pieces, and then put the flesh through the grinder. They bagged the remains and carried them to the nearby Danube River, where they dumped them in the water. How do we know this? Because the criminal group took pictures of the process, and then they sent these pictures to their friends to brag. And sometimes they also sent the pictures to their enemies to taunt and warn them. They documented this process all on highly specialized encrypted phones that they thought were secure. They never thought the phone's encryption could be cracked, but it was. And no one thought this whole brutal mess would connect to Serbian law enforcement and officials. But again, it did. I'm Matt Sarnecki, a journalist and filmmaker at the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project. I'm gonna walk you through this whole bizarre story and introduce you to the journalists who connected this group's rise to top Serbian officials. The only reason I can tell you this story is because these supposedly uncrackable, highly encrypted phones were in fact cracked. And here's how it happened. Most people are familiar with mobile apps like Messenger, WhatsApp, Telegram, and Signal. These are the most popular services that offer encryption. They are all thought to be secure to some extent, meaning authorities are not known to be able to break the encryption and uh, read the messages. But this group was using modified phones and software made by a company in Canada called Sky Global. They were advertised as some form of ultimate security. In addition to strong encryption, they had features like self-destructing messages and the ability to wipe the phone remotely. Now in 2019, European authorities started a cross-border investigation because they suspected that these phones were being almost exclusively used by criminals. The authorities discovered the backup servers were in France. And in 2020, a specialized encryption unit is able to crack the group messages feature of these Sky phones. So now authorities are able to secretly read over 2 million messages. And this is about the same time that the gruesome murders in the Serbian home start taking place. We can deduce that European authorities decrypted these extremely gruesome photos grew extremely concerned and decided to share these photos with Serbian authorities. And once Serbian authorities get this information, they're able to determine that one of the suspects is actually quite famous. His name is Veliko Belivuk, and this is his story. Veliko Belivuk, who we'll just call Belivuk, is the leader of a Serbian group called the Principi. In the region, criminal groups get very complicated, so for the purposes of this story, you just need to remember two of them. The Kavac clan and the Shkaliadi clan, and they are at war with each other. Now, Belivuk's group, which roughly translates into the Principled, is allied with the Kavac. His clan is mostly street-level muscle and enforcers, made up of football hooligans supporting Serbia's partisan football team. When I say football hooligans, you might not take it too seriously, but in the Balkans, it's very serious business, with a lot of history and nationalism. And the stadium has always been a firm recruiting ground for organized crime groups. So Belivuk's group is at war. The two groups are assassinating each other with car bombs, snipers, you name it. They are killing and being killed. But these sorts of murders left bodies. So Belivuk's group developed a motto, no body, no crime, and a unique place to realize it for their enemies. They called it the slaughterhouse. Our understanding of what happened is from the testimony of three crew members turned witnesses, the indictment, and the sky messages exchanged as the crew went about planning these murders. At the same time, it's very important for me to say that the trial is ongoing 
no one has been convicted, and the accused deny the charges. This was the first victim of the slaughterhouse, for which we have ample photographic and sky evidence. He was actually Bellybook's friend and a member of the group, but Bellybook got the idea that he was a traitor. Bro, this guy set me up. If everything goes well, in a few days he's going to the slaughterhouse. Bellybook had a clear message. I can't wait to strangle him. From the day of the murder, we have CCTV stills from the home prior to the victim's arrival. Here are members of the crew arriving. This is Bellybook himself. Then the CCTV was turned off. We can only speculate that they didn't want evidence of the victim arriving at the home, but they created their own photographic evidence. We've struggled to determine how to share these photos. It goes without saying they are brutal and sadistic, but at the same time, they create a real-time picture of how this technology functioned and also how this group operated. So we are showing illustrations that are based on the actual photographs. This is the victim. They carved treason into his back. From the witness testimony, we know that he was brutally tortured. He was decapitated with an ax and then cut into pieces. He was fed into the meat grinder. They put his flesh into bags and then dumped it in the Danube River. The next victim they killed because he was in the rival criminal clan. He was lured by an acquaintance who had secretly turned on him under the pretense to buy a gun. The friend drove him to a meadow near the slaughterhouse. But Belly Book Sting was waiting. They jumped him and tied him up, and then took him in a van to the slaughterhouse. And then they started sharing photos with their crew on the Sky app. This is Belly Book in the black t-shirt. The man smiling eventually became one of the cooperating witnesses. They cut off the victim's head with an ax. They rode Korach Pussy on his back in his own blood. Korach was the name of the rival gang's boss. And then sent the murdered man's boss his picture. Let's send him a postcard. Belly book gloats. Look, Mexico in the middle of Belgrade. Ha ha. The last one I'll mention was actually the best man to one of the members of Belly Book's group. It took work to lure and persuade these victims. They had to find them, surveil them, and do this all without being detected. He was also lured with the promise to sell him a gun. They brought him to the home above the slaughterhouse. They played with him, made fun of his mask as they took pictures, but at the same time they were sending these pictures to their friends. They made him think he was there still to buy a gun, knowing full well that the whole thing was a ruse. Then they took him downstairs to the slaughterhouse. They joked. He tripped. Awesome. Then Billy Book took an ax and chopped off his head. And his friend got to work. I just chopped him up. Later they described the victim. He was sick in the head. His organs weren't exactly in good shape either. And then, Serbian police arrested the gang. Danas smo razgovarali o o razbijanju kriminalne bande Belivuk Miljković i Sa velikim ponosom mogu da kažem da je ova banda razbijena. Dakle, ono što je naša poruka, sa ovom bandom smo završili. So that's it. The government got the bad guys and it's case closed. Not quite. This is where it actually gets interesting. For years, there have been allegations that the Serbian government is very closely linked to organized crime groups, including Belivuk's group. I visited with my Serbian colleague, Stevan Dojcinovic, in Belgrade. He is probably the most renowned investigative journalist in all of Serbia, known for his investigations into Serbian politicians and organized crime. This is what he told me when I asked him about Belivuk. This gang is actually was 
very much tied to, to Vucic and his government. And not just that, actually this gang was in a way created by the, by the, by the state. Belly Group was definitely under command of the police. It sounds bizarre, but this is really true. To understand what Stefan's talking about, we need to take a little step back to 2017, three years before the slaughterhouse murders. So this is the very famous video, the CCTV footage of murder that happened in the center of Belgrade. Police arrested actually Bellywook and his associates, uh, and uh, later he was charged for participating in this murder. And not just that, also police seized uh, his phones. So police got Bellywook's phone and made a report on the WhatsApp messages that they found inside. This report was actually first published by the magazine NIN. I also want to make clear that this report on Bellybook's WhatsApp messages was never supposed to fall into the hands of journalists. Basically, it's an analysis of uh, Bellybook WhatsApp messages. When you analyze these messages, Bellybook messages from that time, you can see that uh, he was uh, under control of one really important a policeman. This policeman was one of the top uh, persons of uh, Serbian gendarmerie. Gendarme is telling to Bellywook, Imamo jake pozicije, brate. Imaš mene u deset ljudi sam u policiji, a tu sam na usluzi non stop. So the gendarme that need to deal with hooligans was actually the boss of Bellywook group and giving him direction what he should do, what should not do, what violence he should be old and what not. And it's pretty quite shocking to have such a leading person in police. Like this gentleman telling this, it's pretty devastating. But there's another incident with this police officer that is even more fascinating. It's actually a secret recording of him when he's holding a meeting with Belly Book's men. A source contacted Stefan and handed over an audio recording of this meeting. We managed to get uh, uh, this audio recording. It's one pretty unique thing where we can see that the gendarme was sitting with his members of his group and discussing a lot of things about underworld. It was some sort of kind of team building meeting. <laughs> This audio is clearly showing that the gendarme have a role and that he was some sort of the boss to these uh, hooligans. It's clearly because he's the one who actually leading this meeting and saying this. And so this was kind of definite, uh, definite evidence that we managed to provide in public. But yet, he's still in police. I want to go now, lastly, back to the messages between the gendarme and Bellevue. It wasn't just one rogue police official, it goes much deeper. So here, the gendarme writes to Belly Vuk, Be patient, please. Here is Diana begging you. The gendarme mentions a woman named Diana. He is referring to Diana Herkalovic, as confirmed by the secret police report. This gendarme was just working on behalf, literally the second most powerful person in Serbian police, and that's Diana Herkalovic. She was uh, officially general secretary of the police, which means literally right-hand man of the minister of police himself. And when he was communicated with Bellywook, he will say that Diana, or D, using the first letter of her name, wants you to do this, or she wants you not to do this. So literally, he was just passing her commands to the Bellywook. And that's completely clear from the messages. And not just that, we can see that uh, she was not working on her own because the gendarme will tell, usually to Bellow, he tell, okay, Diana wants you to do this, but you should also know that boss and big boss, which he never ma uh, named, were also, also agree with her. These politicians were never named in these messages. They were just called boss and big boss. Diana and her college eventually, in the end, was fired from police. She was hiding these WhatsApp messages from prosecutor who actually were evidences for high-level corruption. So Diana, the second most powerful police official in Serbia, failed to hand over the very WhatsApp messages that implicated herself with Bellybook. So is all of this the biggest scandal in Serbia? No. 
Deanna was only charged with abuse of office and she's already out of prison. Nothing happened to the gendarme, he is still on the police force as far as we know. The only ones in jail are Belly Book and his gang, and just to make clear, Belly Book denies taking part in any of the murders in the slaughterhouse. But on another note, uh, Belly Book did testify at the trial that he previously worked for the needs and at the service of President Alexander Vucic. And yes, the Vucic government did try to suppress this testimony from becoming public, but Stefan got that too, and he published it. I reached out to President Alexander Vucic, Diana Herkalovich, and the gendarme Nenad Vucic for comment. None of them replied. My personal opinion as a reporter, I think the people who are corrupt in the government are even worse than Belly Group itself, because they are the government and they decide to cooperate with hooligans, with criminals, so they're even worse. 